From the book of St. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 13 and 14. And the book of St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, which is our annual theme. And Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 through 10. The 24th chapter of the book of St. Matthew, the 13th and 14th verses. Let us read together. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 10. Romans, the sixth chapter, verses 3 through 10. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Let us reason together for a few moments from this subject, a kingdom perspective of baptism. A kingdom perspective of baptism. Will you repeat that after me? A kingdom perspective of baptism. We are blessed tonight in as much as the Lord has chosen to prosper this kingdom ministry. Our annual theme reminds us that Jesus has received all power, all authority, exousia, dunamis. Of course, the word dynamite is derived from the word dunamis. Jesus has received the power. He said, all power, all authority is given unto me. And then the next thing he says is, go ye into all the world. Notice the nature of this great commission. The power has been given to Jesus, but the great commission has been given to you and to me. How 
do we make that connection that Jesus has received the power, but you and I are sent on the mission? Let us not overlook the fact that you cannot engage in the mission of the kingdom until Jesus shares the power of the kingdom. Most people, when they get all the power, they want to keep the power. They want to hold on to the power. They want to consolidate, concentrate the power, and then boast about how much power they have. But here's what Jesus says. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Jesus does not receive the power so that he can keep it. He receives the power so he can share it. And whenever God gives you power or authority, remember, he doesn't give it for you to have to buy bigger hats. He doesn't give it to you so your head can swell or so that you can boast about your new position or your new authority. No, he gives you power to empower others. He makes you strong, not to beat up on people, but to make others strong. He says, you then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. God saves you to save others. He heals you to share your healing testimony with others. This is the only faith I know that is about others. Our book that we are reading together as a congregation, The Purpose Driven Life, reminds us that it's about others. It is not about you. It's about others. Love one another. Pray one for another. Forgive one another. Esteem others more highly than yourselves. When you realize that God has put you here to benefit others, then he empowers you so that you can empower others. That says, who is it that you have prayed for today? Who is it that you have encouraged today? Who is it that you have let your light shine upon today? The Lord does not save us to isolate us or put us into a corner, but he sends us out so that we can share his love with one another. Thanks be to God, somebody shared God's love with you. The song says, somebody prayed for me. Somebody witnessed to you. Somebody showed you kindness. Somebody reminded you of how much God loves you. Why don't you just look at somebody and tell them, God loves you. And then tell them, and I love you too. Yes, baptism then is the initiation into God's kingdom. Amen. Which means that every believer must develop a kingdom perspective. And the reason why we must develop a kingdom perspective is because God has called us to kingdom living. To be in the kingdom means to be under new management. It means to be under God's government. It means to pray a kingdom prayer. Our Father. Once you're in the kingdom, you get away from so much I, me, mine. You got to stop saying me so much. You got to stop saying mine so much. You got to stop saying I so much. Because you can't even spell sin if you take I out. You don't have to say man, just say hmm. Whenever you're at the center of your life, whenever you're on the throne, then that means you have set yourself up for doom and disaster. But when you humble yourself and become obedient unto Christ, Jesus is your life. And because he is your life, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being, in him we are forgiven, in him we are delivered in him. We are set free in him. We thrive. We prosper because we can do all things through Christ. And what does Christ do? He strengthens us through his blood. He 
empowers us. The blood that reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day shall never lose its power. Why? A kingdom perspective of baptism? Because baptism is too big to be denominationalized. Don't let anybody tell you that baptism is a denomination. Because before there were denominations, there was baptism. Before there was a church, there was baptism. Look at the words of Jesus. Before he ever uses the word church, he's already bringing you into the kingdom initiation of baptism. Before Jesus does it, he has a MC, a forerunner, John the Baptist, who presents Jesus Christ to the world. What is the message of John? Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's why he began to baptize. Because in order to become a part of God's kingdom, you must have an immersive experience. You must have a saturating experience. Not a little dab would do you. But a saturation experience, a burial experience, and a resurrection experience. That is why after John preaches the kingdom, and then Jesus validates it by being baptized of John. And John recognizes this seems to be flipping the script because I'm not even worthy to unloose your shoes. Now, if anybody ought to be doing the baptizing, it's you. But here's what Jesus says, suffer it to be so. Jesus is not going to ask you to do something that he doesn't do himself. If Jesus tells you to love loves first and gives himself for us. If Jesus tells you to sacrifice, he sacrifices himself. If Jesus tells you to worship, he worships himself. If he tells you to pray, he prays himself. If Jesus tells you to be baptized, then he is baptized himself. A leader, especially a servant leader, doesn't go and send you. He leads you by example. This is why when Jesus is baptized in the Jordan, I know you heard the song tonight say that I stepped in the water. The water was cold. I don't want you to dare think that we haven't done our work and used the heater in the baptizing pool. Because we know what that means. I want you to understand tonight you are having a very sanitized and edited edition of baptism. This is not the way baptism originally happened. Last year, a number of us went to Israel and we had an old-fashioned baptizing in the Jordan River itself. I'm not talking about stagnant water. I'm talking about flowing water, flowing cold water with a breeze and I want you to understand that it's all together different when you in flowing water cold water and you get in there talking about you want to be baptized that's an extreme commitment to faith this is convenient tonight but what Jesus said that when I want you to be baptized I want you to step out into dangerous territory because it is symbolic of dying spiritually tonight you getting ready to die to something so that you can be resurrected to another dimension of life you're not going to be the same tonight after you are baptized baptism means something has got to go down into the grave and I'm going to leave it there I'm going to leave some habits behind I'm going to leave some issues behind I'm going to leave some chains behind when I get up I'm rising in the newness of Christ. Come on, help me give God some praise to me. My brothers and sisters, a kingdom perspective of baptism is radically different. It's not the same as 
a denominational perspective. Because once you get into denominational perspective, different denominations baptize in different ways. Some denominations baptize babies. We do not. And we will not. We christen babies and we bless babies, but baptism involves volition or your will. It involves a confession of faith. It means you got to have the point of consciousness in your life where you say, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and that he rose from the dead. And if you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God has raised up Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. Come on, help me give God some praise tonight. And so I don't have anything to do with what other denominations do. That's on them. I have to answer to God for myself. I have to answer to God for what I preach to you. I do that understanding this kingdom principle. Jesus never allowed anybody else to preach to his sheep but Jesus. Hello? In Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, which was one of the largest audiences that Jesus had ever amassed on the side of the mountain against the backdrop of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus didn't say, oh, well, maybe I ought to invite a guest preacher today. What's a guest preacher going to say? Jesus didn't just have the word. He is the word, which means ain't nobody got this message but the messenger who is Christ. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. So what Jesus was saying, in order for me to bring this message today in the seminar on the mount, I had to be in the beginning with God. I had to be before the foundation of the world. And then I had to be wrapped in swaddling cloth, born of a virgin, lying in a manger, because the word was made flesh. Came no guest preacher do that. And if Jesus didn't invite somebody else to preach then, he ain't inviting somebody else to preach now. That's why you ain't hearing me preach Felton tonight. I'm preaching Jesus. That's why I had you to read your own Bible. Take out your Bible and read it for yourself. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. And I'm not going to ever preach a sermon and it's not in the Bible. I dare you to shout. Run down the aisle on that. Never preach a sermon that is not scriptural. Never preach a sermon that is not sanctioned by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. It ain't me. It's the Christ in me. You got any Christ in you? Come on, help me give him some. If he's in you, help me give him some praise tonight. Yes, I need to preach this sermon. And I'm glad that the Lord brought us to this point. For in our Ecclesiastical year, this is the last month. And these are the final sermons in this sermon series about the kingdom mandate for ministry. The Lord has set his approval upon it in causing these candidates to step forward in faith. I can't change your heart, but God can. It takes God to convict you. It takes God to give you new birth. It takes God to give you a new mind, a new attitude, a new direction. Jesus is the one who saves, so not the preacher. Jesus. Let me hear somebody say, Jesus. Jesus then being a kingdom preacher. You know, Jesus didn't preach the church. He announced the church and said, I will build the church. He didn't say, I have built it. Nor did he say, I am building it, but he said, I will. Why did he say, I will? Because I can't build the church until after I shed my blood on Calvary. The church is a blood-built 
organism. The church is what is conceived in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Jesus has to birth it. And while he's in the process of birthing it on his knees in the garden of Gethsemane, the enemy tried to kill him. The Bible says as he prayed, sweat ran down as great drops of blood, which means he hyperventilated. The enemy wanted to kill him before he got to the cross. That's an attempt at abortion. Satan knew that if I can kill Jesus before he gets to the cross, I can kill what's in him. But what does the word say? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when God puts this word in you, when God puts his kingdom in you, when God puts his anointing in you, he puts something in you death can't kill. The thief may come to steal, kill, and to destroy, but now that I'm come, you're going to have life and have it more abundantly. Let me hear somebody say more abundantly. Come on, help me give God some praise here tonight. The kingdom perspective then means that you must have a global perspective. There are those who think on a certain side of the track or a certain section of the city or they think through a lens of skin color or ethnicity. But when God expands you in the spirit, when he bursts you open with rivers of living water flowing out of your belly, you can cross the tracks. You can cross racial barriers, ethnic barriers. You can cross class barriers. You can preach to the world. You can preach to the president. You can preach to the governor because you have kingdom authority. I wish I had some help up in here tonight. The kingdom perspective puts you in a whole different category. It lines you up with the teachings of Christ. And that is why the scripture that you read tonight says, and this gospel of the kingdom. Did you read that? Yes. Did you read that scripture? Say yes. Jesus said, but this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, which means I'm under indictment tonight. I can't get up here and preach a denomination. I can't get up here and preach an association. I got to preach what Jesus said. Preach the gospel of the kingdom, which means you don't join this. You must be born again. Something got to change in your mind. Your attitude has to change. When you confess Jesus Christ, God saves you from the inside out. Once you put your faith in Jesus, a new beginning takes place. If anyone be in Christ, you are a new creation. All things are dead. Behold, all things are become. I hope that ain't too heavy for you tonight. You understand baptism is a progressive work of the Holy Spirit. That's why you're not going to hear me singing, I already been to the water and I already been baptized because I don't believe that. That's not what the scripture teaches. Baptism is never a rear view mirror experience. I need to help you tonight. I don't care who said it. I don't care who sing it. You let your theology inform your music, not your music inform your theology. Don't let a little tune get you so happy that you forget what the Bible said. I dare you to shout. Whatever song you sing, be sure it lines up with scripture. You ain't going to hear me saying when I get to heaven, I ain't going to have nothing to do but walk around here and that that is unbiblical. And stop singing that lie. Obviously, you're going to have something to do because he told you you're going to take your crowns and throw them at his feet. Crown him Lord of Lords. You're going to worship 24-7. You're going to give him glory. You're going to sing in the heavenly choir. You're going to worship without ceasing. You have eternal life. you got to let the world, don't let popular music tell you what you believe. You tell the world, not the world tell you. Hello? You home tonight? A kingdom perspective means that you got to grow into this. You 
are making a new beginning. This is a new step. It's an initiation, but it's not the end. And that's why you can't go around talking about, I already been to the water. No, baptism is progressive. Baptism is continual. You don't get just one baptism. You don't believe it? Look at Jesus, your master, your savior, your healer, your example. How many times is Jesus baptized? Well, let's look at scripture. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Didn't you read that tonight? Here's what he said. No, you not. He didn't say, have you heard? He didn't say, have you read? And he didn't say, do you believe? Sometimes you got to get past what you heard. And you got to get past what you read. And you got to get to the point of what you know. I know I am redeemed. I know my sins are forgiven. I know I've been born again. Something you shouldn't have to read off the paper. It ought to be in your heart. And if it's not in your heart yet, keep reading it until you believe it, practice it, live it, and become it. Keep reading it until you know it, memorize it, testify it, pray it, sing it, believe it. God says, no, you not. That so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. Uh-oh, he didn't say nothing about water. That's what I want you to know tonight. Before you get to that water, you got to have a baptism into the person, Jesus. You got to know Jesus. Know him until you look at your hands. Your hand look. Know him till you can look at your feet and they look new. Know him till you can talk a new talk, sing a new song, walk a new walk, have a new experience. Know him until you can love your enemies. Come on, touch somebody and ask them, do you know Jesus? Ask somebody else, do you know him? I'm not talking about have you heard about him. I'm not talking about have, have you read about him. I'm talking about do you know him? How do you know him? Talk to him for yourself. The Bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, this is a whole modern thing we doing. I didn't come up this way. I had to call Jesus until something happened to me. I had to call Jesus until I felt the presence of God. I had to call Jesus until I felt the fire in my bone. You got to feel something. You got to know something. Say yes. God don't want no dead, dry, half church want somebody that had an experience I know God has delivered me I know he hears my prayer I feel his power when I call his name I know he's real anybody here to stand on your feet if you know it help me say I know he's real say it again I know he's real come on and clap your hands and act like you know it up in here I said, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo! Oh, yes. I know it. You may be seated for a moment. I wish I had time to preach this thing. I feel like we need a revival. I said, I feel like we need a revival. Somebody say revival. Say it again, revival. Oh, revival. Oh, Lord. No, no, my brothers and sisters, baptism is not a, I've been there and done that experience. It's not a t-shirt that you can say, I've already been there. Here's what a baptism is. I'm going to the next. 
baptism. Did not Romans chapter 6 verse 3 say, here's your first baptism. If you've been baptized, you were baptized into the person, Jesus Christ. And if you were baptized into the person, Jesus Christ, you were baptized into his death. And if you were baptized into his death, you ever heard anything dead needs to be buried? So when you are baptized into his death, then you have to be buried with him by baptism into death. You can't be resurrected if you ain't never died. I've never been sick in my life. How can I know he's a miracle worker if I've never been in trouble? How can I know that God is a deliverer if I've never been in what the Bible calls a horrible pit? I was lost, but now I am found. You gotta know this. I was blind, but now I can see Oh Jesus Shed his blood for me Jesus Died on the cross for me Jesus Took my place On the cross In the grave Oh Jesus Went down into hell For me Jesus Loved me enough To take my place Jesus Jesus cared enough about me. Say, I want you to live. So I'm going to die for you. I'm going into hell for you. But then you're going to have to get with the program. Even though I took your place, you got to get with me. You got to suffer with me. You got to die with me by faith. You got to surrender your life. You got to experience the grace of God. You were saved by grace through faith that not of yourselves is the gift of God lest anyone should boast. You don't work to get saved, but after God saves you, you do the works of the kingdom. You don't work to get joy, but after you have joy, oh Lord, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord work out your own salvation sometimes you gotta do for yourself oh Lord I said some things you gotta do for yourself some things God will not do for you you gotta wash your own face you Gotta brush your own teeth. You gotta take your own bath. You gotta clap your own hands. Why don't you try it? You gotta confess with your own mouth that Jesus is Lord. You gotta believe in your own heart. You gotta shout for yourself. I can't shout for you. I can't praise him for you. But if you know you've been changed, if you know you've been saved, oh, oh, if you know you've been set free, do something for yourself. Praise him for yourself. Worship him for yourself. Thank him for yourself. Come on and tell him, thank you. Thank you. The more you thank him, the more the power come down. The more you thank him, the more the anointing. Come on, stand on your feet and thank him. Thank him for mercy. Thank him for grace. Thank him for his spirit. Thank you for joy. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Somebody help me thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for a new song. Thank you for a new heart. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. 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 Well, 
That's a good introduction. There's more to come. Touch somebody and say, there's more to come. And so what you want to prepare for is the next baptism. Touch somebody and say, the next baptism. Because after you get baptized in water, there's another medium. Jesus said, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. They begin to ask him, when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? It's not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. But if you want some power, I'm going to tell you how to get it. Go to the upper room and stay there until God does a work in you and on you and through you and for you. Stay there until the Spirit has control of your life. Then I'm going to give you something that can only come from God. Money can't buy it. You shall receive power. Come on, lift your hands and say power. Say it again. Power. Power. Let us give God thanks. Eternal God, our Father, we bless you for this opportunity to reach souls around the world. May you continue to bind us closer together in the love of Jesus Christ. As your word says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. May the power of the Holy Spirit move upon our lives that we may fulfill our kingdom assignment. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.